Welcome back to Successful Living. I feel like a broken record. Every time we have on Chad Kritzis, uh, who is our real estate expert, I tend to say the same things. You know, it just seems like we just keep going forward and forward and we're waiting for something to happen and it's just, it is all good stuff in the market. So, Chad, welcome to the show once again. How are you? Thanks, Rob. I appreciate it. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, so, you know, I, I'm just wondering in general, you guys seem to, I think you and I have talked about this, you're still just as busy as ever, correct? Oh, yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's one of the craziest markets I've seen in 21 years. It's it hasn't slowed down at, at, you know at all. Yeah. Um, so I think we. You know, I wanted to jump right in. If we could take a look, we've got some updated numbers uh, from the Rhode Island housing uh, statistics. And so if you could walk us through this and give us a little background on it, that'd be great. Okay, great. So what we we're going to break this down really into three categories. So multifamily properties, sale prices are up 12 percent. Some areas of the state we're seeing much higher, like uh, Newport County, for instance. The, Multifamily prices have skyrocketed. Number of sales are down 9.2 percent, but that's pretty typical of what we've been talking about the last few months. There's just a, a complete shortage of homes for sale. Um, distressed sales, you know, very really little change there. Single-family home sales up 13 percent on the median price statewide at 334. Uh, really a high number. Number of transactions up 9 percent, and then condos median price up 6 percent. And number of sales up four percent. So I mean, you're really you're just seeing you know sales and prices just just continue to climb as we as we go through this. Yeah, I mean, so one of the things we, we look at is um, that it, it, it in, it's increased, and this is over last year, correct? These numbers. That's correct. So you're saying that we've actually we're up over thirteen percent on a single family house in the pricing from one year ago, and, and one year ago was was a really good market still, correct? It was a great market, and we were doing some research today, and it's, you know, it was still a seller's market a year ago. It's even more so now. So for the people that are thinking about selling their house, they're really capitalizing on the equity that they've, they've gained over the last few years. Okay. Uh, and, you know, you mentioned a little bit Newport County. Um, are there certain areas, is, is it straight across the board that we're getting all this really good growth year over year um, or even month over month? Or are there certain, you know, towns that seem to stick out or, you know, are, are doing better than others? Well, I think each county has really has a couple that have really uh, increased. In, in Newport County, it's been Middletown and Newport, and the East Bay, Warren, and East Providence have really been busy. Up north, uh, Lincoln and Smithfield, and then South County, uh, Narragansett, and Kent County, East Greenwich. So those are really the ones that have I've seen a, a large increase in the in the number of sales in that amount of time. <clears throat> the other thing to note is in those same towns, on average. You're dealing with about 30 percent less days on market, which means houses are selling about a third faster than they were at this time last year. Now, August typically, like we talked about, August typically is a slower month because of back to school and <clears throat> family vacations and those kind of things. That didn't really happen this year, so we've really continued through August, September, now we're in November, and it's just continued to to go right pretty steadily. Yeah, you mentioned you know the past discussions that we've had that everything kind of from COVID got delayed. Do you still consider mm -hmm. these numbers like a delay, like this is representative of a July and August number because of what COVID did to us? Well, September and October typically are always very good months. Okay. Um, you know, and I've always said that. And August I find tends to be even slower than the winter. Now, if it snows, that changes everything. So two years ago we had those blizzards and everything shut down. Last year we had no snow and we stayed, we stayed steady straight until, well, March when you know COVID hit. Um, but other than that, we, you know, we're staying very steady right now, and I would say pretty typical for our fall. Our fall market is very strong; it always is. Yeah, uh, th that's great. So, switching a little bit, uh, you know, there's so much movement in and out. And my my initial question just comes up to, you know, where are all these people going, or where are they coming from, or whatever it may be. But um, what are you seeing as kind of some some reasons why people are moving in and out of houses so okay. fast? So we're seeing a lot of, you know, a lot of, I'm seeing a lot of downsizing, you know, really capital, like people have been in their houses 20, 30 years, big house, empty nesters, really capitalizing on, on the high sale prices in certain areas. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you take that same idea, right, we have the guys that are now, well, guys, people that are now working from home, right? So, so now you have the people looking for more space because now they need the home office. Now they, you know, whereas, you know, my dining room turned into my home office for three months. <laughs> right. Right. So there's a there's a crew of contractors in my house finishing out an office for us. Are you still so, seeing that, by the way, like people coming in, even though like 
you know, hopefully co like it's temporary, right? But you're seeing people that are making moves for that reason too, correct? Yes, because a lot of the big companies, and I, I have friends that work for, I won't use the company names because it's probably not correct, but you know, a lot of the big companies have already announced that nobody's coming back into the office more than a limited time frame until 2021. Yeah. So, you know, I think the home office is, is going to be, uh, I think, more of the new norm and <clears throat> probably less large office space. So, you know, long term, what this does to the commercial real estate market really, I think, is, is going to be something, you know, come this time next year, you and I are going to be talking about. Okay. Um, you know, I, I had this other question kind of buried within this question right here, and I've had it come up a few times where what advice would you give somebody if they said, listen, they're ready to downsize or they're not ready to downsize, but their kids have moved out of the house and they're saying, listen, I don't know if I want to downsize. I don't know if I want to move to a different state, but does it make sense with how high the market is right now that I do something? Do you ever have that come up? Or even if you don't, what sort of recommendation would you give to that person in that situation? Well, I, I think anybody that's considered selling their house, now is the time to do so. I mean, I, we've never seen an increase in, in a certain neighborhood specifically where there's nothing for sale. And when they come on the market, they go with multiple offers. So there's, <clears throat> we have a couple of neighborhoods nearby where I just spoke to a seller this morning. And he said, there's been people walking up and down the street, knocking on the doors, oh my asking if they consider selling their house. Uh, just you drive down these streets and there's no for sale signs in some of these neighborhoods that people want to live in. So I think for, for any homeowner, if, if they considered selling their house, you know, I, 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 maybe the market collapses tomorrow, maybe it doesn't, but this is, I mean, this is record numbers. Right. So you would get I mean, those people, what, maybe they could even go rent a place temporarily, a nice place if they don't really know where they want to land. Um, that's a possibility too. Absolutely. And that's, that's, you know, really, I think a, kind of the, the niche of the market right now is if, if you've considered capitalizing on the equity in your home, this is probably the, the strongest time. I've seen. It's re very reminiscent, as I said, of you know 2008, where the price is just so crazy. Yeah. All right. Uh, you mentioned going into kind of the winter season and how things can change when it comes like a snowstorm or something like that. Do you? Um, what do you? What do you kind of expect as we enter? You know, obviously the year has been great. First of all, last winter, how was it? And what are your expectations for this winter going into December, January, February? Well, as I said, we never really slowed down last year because of, uh, you know, there was really no weather to, that slowed anybody down. You know, we were in the office every day and, and we're not seeing it. The interest rates are still ridiculously low, right? It's like free money out there. I mean, you know, you're in the financial world. So going forward, we don't see any slowdown at this point. Now, you know, listing wise, we're carrying less listings than we usually do because there's, they either sell really quickly or there's just less homes for sale. So, you know, the only thing is if there's a big influx of inventory, that's obviously going to change the market dramatically. Gotcha. Okay. Um, all right. And, you know, to that point, inventory is moving so quickly. What would you tell to our listeners who might be potential buyers? How can they prepare themselves in this environment to be ready when they find something? Well, there's a, there's a couple of tips we always use, right? Is, is always have, have your agent already lined up, know who you're going to work with. You know, know, that, know their track record, know that you can work well together. Uh, more importantly, you have to be pre-approved. I mean, you, you have to get there ahead of time, speak to the mortgage broker or, or bank or whoever you're going to use, credit union, get everything lined up in advance so that when you get into the scenario, if there are multiple offers, that you're, you are prepared. And you're, you're not, it's, it's not, hey, I'll, I'll get your pre-approval in three days after they take the other offer. So it's really about being prepared and, and knowing what contingencies you're going to have going forward. You know. What if you need to sell a house or you know what's that time frame what's the house worth have everything planned in advance so that when that time comes you're ready to go and and you can compete in today's market so as a buyer fortunately or unfortunately you are you are competing and you need to make yourself as i guess desirable as possible and you can move as quick as possible and you can offer as much money as possible um, so as a buyer you really need to be prepared and ready to go uh, someone who hasn't sold their house yet, are they really at a disadvantage? Well, it matters, right? Yes and no, because we know the market time is shorter. So if we call it, we just call it a hover clause, a contingency on the sale of your home to pull the funds from one to the other. So at, at least having it prepared, having it staged, you know, cleaned out, all the things you're going to do when that time comes, and being ready so that if that, that time does come, that you can pull the trigger and move fairly quickly. Okay. You know, matter on the price points, you know, stuff sells very, very fast. All right. Um, 
kind of as we wind down a little bit here, what's your advice uh, when someone's now look, well, they're going into the winter season and let's say they're selling their house. Uh, do they put Christmas ornaments on? Do they decorate it differently? Do they kind of leave things as is? I think I ask you this question every year, but I think it's good that people that are getting ready to put it on. I mean, all real estate agents are a little different. Some are going to obviously give the advice, some may not. So, you know, if you're still living in your house, what, what do you recommend to people to do? Well, it's it's always very respect to the staging decluttering issue. As long as I'm, I'm happy, you know, we, we have professional photographers that come in and out and do all these things for us. So if you have a Christmas tree up or, or holiday tree, sorry, and, uh, and we do the photos, we're happy to send the photographer back in after the new year and redo everything to freshen it up. I mean, there's, there's nothing worse than having a house that sits on the market and it's on the market in April, but there's still holiday pictures still online. So it's our job to make sure we stay on top of those things and make sure everything is updated properly. Yep. Just and so our clients can really, you know, get and, as much And as open houses as kind of COVID numbers are increasing as of today, are, are open houses still about the same or have they narrowed down doing less of it? Are you still still having open houses? I'm assuming yes. We are, we're, we're still allowed to do so. Um, it, we're more, it's more like standing guard outside and you know, only letting you know, one group in at a time if they're with their agent or limiting the number of people that go in and out. Uh, you know, all the lights, everything's open before they go inside so they're not touching things, masks and gloves. Yep. And then you know, we go through with the Clorox wipes after and clean it all down. Great. As always, you give us great information to our viewers. We appreciate it. Hopefully we'll have you here, I'm hoping the next time and we get away <laughs> from the Zoom, but uh, we will talk to you soon. Thanks, Chad. Thanks, Rob. Have a great day. Great. Stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to talk about your checklist for the year end uh, when dealing with taxes and financial affairs.